back to the spook house. Doug, hello, my friend. How are you? Hello, Sister Jarman. I am feeling so Hi, good, sister. so refreshed. <laughs> we were going with a uh, grunge aesthetic there. Sister Jarman sounds like a 80s hair metal band. Hey, kind of does. We were just talking like about corn before we started <laughs> recording. Yeah, just the nostalgia factor of uh, listening to good corn music. That's not brand new. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling refreshed. I got a Doug's got a Hershey bar. Fresh I, sh I out of the shower. Fresh out of the shower, shaved my sack. Uh, got right. some sugar in me. A whole <laughs> lot of S's. Shower, sack, and snack. <laughs> yeah, so How are you, gonna... Daniel? Oh, I'm great. <laughs> so <laughs> the episode's off to a great start. Yeah. Um, Already off the rails. No surprises there. Yeah, so this is just going to be a <clears throat> sort of a loose YouTube only recap of what we watched lately. I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but I was like, hey, uh, let's just record some shit. We're going to talk let's about movies and yeah, let's we're going to talk about corn, snacks, sacks, uh, salt burn. Probably definitely going to get into salt burn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, I was thinking about getting salt burn like tattooed across my uh, stomach, like how Tupac has thug life. Salt burn. Uh, it's eight letter word. It fits. Don't do that. You can do it <laughs> on the knuckles. Uh, I could, oh shit! Burn. Well, I have my uh, well, two of my knuckles filled in already, so it would have to be like salt burr. What do you have on your knuckles? I have uh, a coffin with a moon in it. For like the emblem, uh, I guess uh, in the middle, if there was to be one, and then uh, straight edge for life, brother. XXX. Well, you got a straight edge tattoo. I didn't know that. You never do that. I, no, I didn't know you had that tattoo. Oh, really? I'm surprised. I could have sworn you knew about that. Oh uh, yeah, I got it when I was, hmm, I think like 2016. Yeah, definitely maybe? mid 2000s. Oh, 2016. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not even. That's a little late. <laughs> mid 2000s, I couldn't even get it. I was I was still a wee little lad, but my my first tattoo I got when I was I immediately when I turned eighteen I got um my ribs tattooed. I'm not, I don't regret it that much, but it's like a kill switch engage song, and it's just down my ribs. But there's worse. I have worse. <laughs> you do have like a lot of metalcore tattoos. You got trivium. Just two. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, it. I mean, that's it. That's that is kind of a lot. That's <laughs> two. That's metal. two. Two more than I should have. Uh, what was what was your first tattoo? It was the Halloween poster art. That are I you eighteen? Yeah, eighteen. That's that's the magic number. As soon as people turn eighteen, yeah. The entire time themselves. I was in high school, I was like, my first tattoo is going to be the Halloween poster art. Dude, I wish I kind of went through with a lot of my stupid ideas rather than like i love trivium like i wanted to get like a um shake from aqua teen hunger force i wanted to get that tattooed on me I would, that would have been better than uh than trivium might in my have, eyes yeah it might have aged better but yeah this uh, the trivium tattoo was a little too big to get covered up i i need to like figure out how to get that removed or something yeah, uh, Matt Heffy would be very upset. Isn't that his name? Singer. Uh, yeah, something like that. Matt Heffy, Heffy. I really never Heffy. knew how to. Heffy. Heffy. I, I Heffy. don't know. Matt Heffy. <laughs> All right, Doug. Um, let's talk about some movies. Hey, Hold on. Funny, movies, funny story. I <laughs> sorry. I, I Trivium played my job, and there was uh during like 2006 i had gastritis and i would listen to their album the crusade like as i was like puking and throwing up and just like dying and i told that to my boss and she was like you should go upstairs and like tell them that like the band and i was like yeah i'll do it and <laughs> i went i went I, <laughs> I went on the end of the meet and greet line and i was like Hey, like, nice to meet you. I, lo I love you guys. Like you guys helped me through my, my uh, stomach issues and my gastritis. And he was like, thanks. <laughs> cool. and I was like, all right, let's hurry up and take this picture from, uh, so we can get rid of this embarrassment. 
You're like, yeah, dude, I used to like shit my brains out all the time. <laughs> I'd listen to your music. It would really, really get me through it. You know? uh, yeah, my 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 shit stained SpongeBob boxers blasting the crusade for hours. Oh, that's there was great. a time. Anyway, Phil. Hey. <laughs> anyway, yes. Doug. Hey, speaking of uh funny stories, you told me about your grandpa. Like Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Uh I was like, save this for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even that that deep of a story. It's just like what any person would do to protect the loved one. Um yeah, it was my grandpa's 90th birthday yesterday. So we went to Jersey and we're my mom's side of the family, so we were all hanging out. They're the Hungarian side, not the Italian side. Um so yeah, they were like my aunt Stacy gave like a toast and everything uh, because my grandpa is like ancient and still still with it. Hey, it looks uh, good for 90. Yeah, mentally he's still there. He could have a conversation and actually like have a like a back and forth response and everything like that. My grandma is she's like, hi, Doug, how are you? Oh, my God, shave your beard. OK, bye. That's, that's it. <laughs> like just no talking. She's just talking at you. But um, yeah, my aunt Stacy was saying uh was telling a story about um how she went to this pizza place all the time and this dude always like hit on her and like it just kept being like a consistent thing and it was really uncomfortable and she told my grandpa and he came to the pizza place with a knife and threatened the guy if he like ever does anything and says anything again he will cut him (laughs) like cut his throat holy shit (laughs) Yeah, my grandpa did not fuck around. He he owned a bar. I think I mentioned this to you at some point. Uh, and he had like a bat like under the bar, obviously, because you know, old Huckleberry. It's a, it's a di- oh my god, <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't even want to remember that we watched that movie. But you know what? I have a question. Yeah. Would you rather watch Halloween Kills again or Scream Six again? Right now. <laughs> Probably Halloween kills. Honestly, I tend to agree with you because I've had enough. I've had enough yeah. of Scream Six. Yeah, I mean, we we certainly talk about it. It feels like every episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's re- it's just like a plague. It's like a black cloud over our lives, or maybe just mine. I keep bringing it up. Um. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely go Halloween kills. So. Yeah, it just has, I feel like, I feel like there's a more good in Halloween Kills than there is of Scream 6 that outweighs I would negatives of that. both of those yeah. movies. But yeah. even so, it, it's not, I don't think Halloween Kills is a great movie at all, but at least yeah. it has like believable kills. I'll take that. Yeah, that's true. It does have like um, the better, <clears throat> the better moments out of the yeah. two. I think the so, gore, the gore factor, I would say, because yeah, the dialogue is, gore. yeah, the go- especially, like you said, you did say this even when we talked about Halloween Kills originally. Michael Myers is is good, you know. James Jude Courtney plays a very believable hulking Michael Myers. Yeah, that I can they, totally agree with. Yeah, they definitely got Michael right in the first two movies, and Halloween ends. He's just kind of like frail and. Not even really in the movie a lot, so <laughs> the fucking Michael Mania running wild <laughs> is hulking up for those kills. Um, all right, Doug. So, what do you want to talk about? What movies? Well, okay, just looking at my letterbox here, I got it pulled up. Um, we both saw the Iron Claw. The Iron Claw was, I can't wait to see that movie again. Because it's coming on streaming soon. Uh, I'm not sure what platform, but yeah, I uh, I thought that movie was was great. The more I marinate on it, like when I fir- I don't know about you, but I think we agreed on this this theme, if I, if I remember correctly. But it was like we both thought it was good, but it didn't have like I don't know. I felt like there was something missing. Yeah, emotionally. Yeah, it didn't have like. Um... It was like something missing in terms of like resolution. And if you learn about the actual story, um, that guy, what's his name? Kevin, Kevin Von Eric, Kevin Von Eric. 
he like moved to Hawaii. His his two sons they wrestle now. He has like a really nice family. Lives in a beautiful place. Yeah, it's like show some of that. Like give him some resolution. But yeah, I mean, it would. I think this this um this whole thing would have worked better as a series because, like you said, there's so there's only so much you could tell in two and a half hours. Right, and. They were, they were missing a whole other brother, which I don't even seem to mind. I mean, I don't really care about that because I, I, I do like how all the other uh, actors portrayed the real life wrestlers. Uh, like their stories were all distributed well. I thought, I kind of thought Zach Efr- Efron got outshined a little bit because there was so much focus on everyone else. And he was like, he kind of like took a back seat a little bit, but he, I thought he was great. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I feel like people are coming around on Zach Efron now. Remember like when he first started, it was, it was kind of the same effect that Ryan Gosling oh. at one point and uh, Robert Pattinson. That's where I thought you were going. Exactly. Yes. <clears throat> same brain, yeah. same brain. But if you go back even further, Ryan Gosling kind of got that too. Remember when the notebook came yeah. out and and uh lots of fragile males were like, oh, Ryan Gosling stars in a lame movie, The Notebook. God, that guy sucks. It's like, hey, it's okay. The movie almost made you cry, or you did. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, you can be public about it. It's okay to be emotional. Boys can cry too. I've been crying all my life. <laughs> but no, you're right. That, I feel like uh, Ryan Gosling and Robert Pattinson and Zac Efron got a bad rap because, again, they were in quote unquote chick flicks, which are, yeah. you know, the notebook. I had never seen the notebook, but like mm. it's a heartfelt, emotional movie. I mean, you could watch it now and have your, you know, your qualms about it, but like it's not, it's just a movie about like a relationship. Everyone's in a relationship. Everyone has the potential. Movie. Yeah, I know you watch it. Uh, I've never gotten around to watching it, but I, uh, I'm not oh, opposed shit. to watching it. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. It's not a, not a bad movie. And Ryan Gosling is a is a fantastic actor. Yeah, same with Robert Pattinson. So, dude, I, I people gave Robert Pattinson so much shit for Twilight, and. You watched Twilight. You did a whole marathon, and sure like when did. you, yeah, and you were into it. Um, uh, I mean, I mean into it know, for different yeah. reasons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was. They're not like flawless. I mean, it's not master- the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, they're not like a flawless masterpiece, but I can see why the nostalgia is there for those movies, and like I get it, and and they are very simple watches. You can just kind of turn your brain off. You don't really need it. You just, yeah, it's, they were fine. I yeah. Mean, I, I, I still need to get into that, into that watch along of a, like a, a nice twilight marathon for myself. One fine Sunday morning. Um, but I, when you real when you realize that Robert Pattinson, like played the character the way he did, because he hated the character himself and decided to like be this brooding presence. It's like, all right, like he's on everyone's side here. <laughs> but like, yeah. I like how he was like, let me fuck around real quick and just turn it around and then like do good time and like water for elephants. And then all this other shit where everyone's now like Robert Pattinson is amazing. It's like, yeah, yeah. you just had a bad role. <laughs> it happens. It happened to Robert De Niro. It happens to all actors. Yeah, Robert De Niro, he put out some some stinkers as well, huh? I, I like to call that period of time for Robert De Niro uh, the paycheck era. Is he still he was, in that era? I, like, what's the last good Robert De Niro movie? Well, I guess you could, would you call Killers of the Flower Moon or The Irishman a Robert De Niro movie? Because, I mean, he was, I mean, you know, sure. lead actors in that. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I've, at least he pops up and stuff every now and again to just let everybody know <laughs> yeah he's still i him in like dramas you really can't go wrong i still gotta watch frankenstein me too i've never seen him in frankenstein 
Hey, come here, you. <laughs> come here, little girl. I'm going to toss you in the lake. I'm going to toss throw, you in the lake. I'm going to throw you in the river. Are you mumbling at me? <laughs> Are you mumbling at me? So Iron Claw was pretty good. I enjoyed yes. it. Gave it four four stars out of five. Um, it was sad as shit. It's not a... Like, you're going to be a little bummed out after you watch it. But it is very good. It's a very tragic movie. Yeah, and... um. The whole, the whole, their whole lives are just super tragic. And I think the, the thing that tied it together for me was the song that like, uh, I forgot the brother's name that like does the, he's like the creative one. He's the artsy one, not really like a wrestler, but like that song, uh, by I think arcade fire. It was written by the lead singer of arcade fire and his wife. Um, that shit just like gets me. I immediately like for the movie. Yeah. They played it. Well, it was this it was the song that the brother was playing at the party. Right. And then yeah. they played it at the end. Uh like oh, the I actual thought that song. was just like a uh like a classic rock song or something. It, well, they they wrote it like purposely for that like time period and they but that was the whole point. Like they okay. really na- like they made you think cuz I was like, "Wait, what fucking song is this?" Mm-hmm. I need to look it up. And then when I looked it up, I was like, "Oh, it's like written for the movie." Uh I want to live that way forever. I think yeah. it's called shit is yeah upsetting i was crying when uh when zach efron was like watching his kids play and he's like you know i you know i'm not a brother anymore and i was like damn that's fucking yeah i used to be a brother too sad yeah yeah that's a tough line great and great great ending i I mean like you said resolution could have been better but i i did like that scene with like and the brothers too like in um when they're kind of uh, on the other side of heaven or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Why are you, why are you doing this? <laughs> it's so sad. Trying to make me cry right now. Fuck. I was like, cause they didn't get me the whole time. And I, I usually cry at movies, but like, I mean, I was emotionally upset, but I didn't cry until that moment. It was like, motherfuckers, you just had to yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was, um, it was a great movie. Hey, what would be, as far as like wrestling stories, what would be a good story to turn into like a biopic? Oh, well, if you want to go dark, there's so have many been... to choose from. Yeah. And, and uh, Dark Side of the Ring does it well, but to actually like yeah. have it scripted and acted. Oof. I mean, there's so many interesting ones. If you really want to get crazy with it, you could do Chris Benoit. I mean, uh, I don't think it might be in poor taste to do that. But I his don't story think is just he's so... gonna sign off on that one. Uh, maybe now that Vince is like getting his ass kicked by lawyers, and you know he has like a mouthful of shit, which is his favorite. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's following that Vince McMahon story, but I know you are. But whoo, I mean, we knew he was a not a great person, but to the extent of like reading those messages, I was like, what the fuck? Like this dude is just out of his mind. The way he texts really upsets me. (laughs) Like he says the word C with like a capital C. Yeah. It's like, dude, what are you 12? What the, you're like the head of a multi-billion dollar company. Get it together. I will say this. And I've seen it enough times. If you're like, I'll give you 50 and up 50 years old and up. They text like children. I've seen professional emails with typos, uh, words spelt wrong, uh, run on sentences, no period. uh, Just all I'm like, this is a professional email. What are we doing? Take a, take a goddamn remedial reading course. Have you ever met somebody that changed the text in their phone to like the wacky font? Oh, like Comic yeah, Sans or something? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I've seen someone do that right on their there. email. <laughs> or like the font is like size 48. <laughs> They're just blind and can't see. Yeah. If, if somebody has Comic Sans, if they change it to that, that's a red flag. You should. Yeah, that's how you know they get AARP magazines people. delivered. Yeah, don't trust them at all. Like they are. They mom. are. <laughs> <laughs> minivan moms reunite 
No, I said Minion Mom. They show, oh, like, Minion Mom. Minion, minion memes on Facebook. Yo, I saw this dude. It'll say like, boy, I sure hate Mondays. And it's a Minion <laughs> one like that. <laughs> Who's ready for Wine Wednesday? It's like Dr. Seuss with, with a martini glass. It's like, where do you find these? I'm part of a face Facebook group called Wine Moms. Oh, so you, wine mom humors. You guys just sync your periods together? What's going on? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> um, oh, that was a joke. <laughs> all right. Let's shift gears to another A24 movie. Shift it. Bop it. Nice. Um, <laughs> I watched everything, everywhere, all at once recently. First time watch. And... I was expecting to be like blown away just because people talk about this movie like it will change your fucking life. And um, I was telling you, I know you love the movie. Wholeheartedly. Went into it fully open mind. Like, all right, here we go. I'm ready. Hit me with it. And um, I'm kind of like in the middle on it. I gave it like three stars. Thought it was fine. I like it conceptually. And as far as technical aspects, acting, cinematography, the editing, everything's top notch, like no complaints there. But I just found it to be kind of a tedious watch. Like there was just too much random shit being thrown at the screen. And it's like, I get it. It's like a metaphor for something deeper. And <laughs> But at the same time, it just got to kind of wore on my nerves after a while. It is a lot to take in. There's a lot of stuff yeah. being thrown at you. Um, that's why it's uh, it's one of those movies that you, I wouldn't say have to rewatch, but I feel like rewatching it would definitely help the. Oh, you, you know, like I'm, I'm done. That's I'm out. <laughs> I mean, I saw it. I gave it a shot. I'm not rewatching dude, it. Dude, I, I, I think, and I, I say this like, with my whole heart. I think this movie will go down as like the best movie of all time. That's how deeply I feel about this movie because it is so wow. unique and there's nothing like this movie. I don't think there's anything like this movie, the way they weave like the, like the family drama into that. Like, again, the multiverse thing is kind of like a catalyst for, you know, the general uh, generational trauma because in all aspects of the universe and life, you know, if, if the pattern doesn't break, then you're never going to heal or get better. And I just thought that the way they displayed it and wrote it and acted it like um, with Michelle Yeoh and Ki Kwan uh, at the end, like at the end, like towards the uh, like the whole last hour and a half, I think I was like crying nonstop. At what? Like, everything everything <laughs> happening when <laughs> you're like there's too many flashing images and Dude, really <laughs> shit happening. i feel like i'm getting crying. dementia uh the fucking when she's getting dragged into the portal and she's putting the smiley faces and like she's just so angry and fr and, and frustrated with everything and like that's due to her upbringing and she's with someone who you know chooses to see the bright side and when they when he says that when she says no, when he when Ki Kwan says that line, like, what are you doing? Or something like that. And she's like, I'm learning to love the way, you know, you love. And I'm like, waterworks, baby. That's it. <laughs> uh, that scene, I mean, and like how it shows you that you could unlock like your potential, like your highest potential between all the different versions of yourself. I, mm -hmm. I could talk about See, this movie. I mean, and you're right, like conceptually. All that stuff is great. I mean, I love the message behind it. All the um, the human moments of the movie where it wasn't so chaotic and like the mom and daughter in the parking lot towards yeah. the end of the movie. That was a very touching moment. But I was like, I want to see more of that. Like, just slow down the chaos. You can you, still do some of it. but when it's You were like, waiting for Iron Man to pop out and start like fucking gunning people it, down. It kind of felt like a superhero movie. Like, oh, you got to... Give yourself five paper cuts so you can jump back to the fuck. Down. Yeah. What what are we doing here? But I but oh. you've never seen that in a movie before. I this movie was like 
it was like kung fu movies, superhero, drama, comedy. It was just so it was just like every again, this is again for me, it was like everything you could ever want in a movie. And that like rock scene, like with the rocks at the edge of the cliff, like that shit is like who it's so weird. It's so weird, but like I've never cried at two rocks before with subtitles on the screen. That's I don't know. That's it just got me and like everything that was saying. It's like, yeah, we're all fucked up, but like we just we just have to like kind of move past it and just like live life. Well, I'm I'm glad that you've loved the movie that much and it's I like, think you I need to rewatch it. I see why people love it, but for me, it was just, it was a, the execution of it was not it for you. Yeah. It was like a hyper pop music video. And it, was it, was, just, it was a lot. Yeah. Have you ever saw, have you ever seen Swiss army man? No, I haven't. That was the director's first movie. Yeah. Or, uh, or the one before that. Yes. It was with, uh, yeah. Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, I think you'd like that one a little more. It's still that. weird. It's still I watched weird. Like twenty minutes of it, and I was like, "Nah." I don't All right, like maybe you maybe you just don't <laughs> like these directors. <laughs> I mean, Paul Dano's corpse farting, or was it Daniel Radcliffe? He's like riding yeah. on his body, and he's farting. It's like, okay, but get I, get I, to I, it when once you get because when I saw that movie, like for like a trailer for that movie i was like what the fuck like it's just too it's just so out there and weird but like when you get to like when you see the actual movie and like things kept unfolding you're like oh all right like it's not really about this farting corpse there's a reason why it's called swiss army man and you'll it's just again they make weird movies and either you're in or out so it's yeah. like, you know, you got to buy into the world that they're creating or like you just don't, which is fine. Yeah. And um, look, I'm not I'm sure a lot, most people listening to this loved everything everywhere all at once. And I'm not saying you're wrong or anything, but it just I don't know. Maybe it's like a style thing. It, it's like you said, you're like, I think you just hate anything superhero related. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, like adjacent, that's... like even like crossing into like if someone wears a cape, you're like, fuck this movie. I'm a... <laughs> I don't want to see anyone with capes. Um, but I do agree with you that the daughter should have won the Oscar and not Jamie Lee Curtis. So I mean J JLC was fine, but she was just kind of one note the whole time, like kind of yeah. disgruntled downtrodden irs worker yeah and in her in her other versions of herself she was different but i don't think she did anything out of the norm than what she usually does you know like that the daughter i, I her name's like slipping my mind but she was incredible yeah, and i just was. hate the whole politics of like awards and oscar i mean i love watching the award shows mm -hmm. but like it just feels like they gave Jamie Lee Curtis the award because like, it was here's a, your award for acting over 40 right. years or whatever. It was more like a lifetime achievement type. Exactly. Thing. Like where they keep like, do you need to nominate Meryl Streep in every movie? She's not the, yeah. like, again, she's an incredible actress, but like, it's okay to give new, like up and comers a chance. Like that chick from everything, everywhere, all at once deserved to be nominated at least if not win. Yeah. I agree. And thank God that role didn't go to Aquafina, which apparently it was supposed to. <laughs> you really do not like Aquafina. I've only seen her in Renfield, <laughs> to be fair. All right. You got to see the farewell. You got to see. Uh, well, this is a superhero movie, so never mind. You got to see uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Um, but I just don't. If you didn't like her in Renfield, you're not going to like her in anything else because. All right. That's pretty much Aquafina. Um Hey, when's the last time you watched Red Eye? Cuz I rewatched it like a uh, few nights ago. I think it was like still West Raven's. I think it's pretty solid. Yeah. I haven't seen it in I don't know 10 years. I think maybe it's, over um, 10 years. 
it's the last great Wes Craven movie. Wow. Okay. And that came out in like what? 2005. Yeah, yeah exactly. 2005. Yes. Finally got one right. Um, yeah. Isn't Rachel McAdams isn't in it? Rachel McAdams, Cillian Murphy. Oh, Cillian. yes. Yes. Or is it Killian Murphy? Always it's Killian, but I've been saying Cecilian Murphy for fucking years. Yeah. Now I got to train my brain, but uh, I remember that movie being good. It's solid. It's a great thriller. So who what, did he also it. write it? I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll have to look into that. It's good. Way better than the last two screen movies. <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of a horror movie in a way. I remember Cillian, it being put silly and Murphy in a mask and not on an airplane. Like you got yourself a great horror movie, but exactly a lot of, a lot of good tension. I love it. <clears throat> He's pretty terrifying without a mask too. Yeah. Those, those the sharp re- eyes. Yeah. The reviews are hilarious for it on letterbox. Cause there's a scene where he like, He's choke, choking Rachel McAdams in the airplane bathroom. And they're like, oh, God, I wish you would choke me. In the <laughs> <laughs> you know, people who write letterbox reviews are genius. It's just like thirst trap comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like they're, they're not even afraid of Killian Murphy coming at him with his fucking hands out. <laughs> no breath. All right. At least Killian Murphy's sweating on top of me. Um. All right, dog, throw out a movie. What's, um, what's something that you've seen recently you want to talk about? So I've been wanting to delve deeper into like the earlier films of Ty West, uh, especially with oh, Maxine yeah. coming out. And I texted you about this um, and I watched the innkeepers. That's one that I haven't watched, but I watched it a while ago and I was like, Ooh, I like that movie. I did. The acting was atrocious. I think so. I, I thought it, I thought it was atrocious. I thought Whoever that actress is, and yeah, I mean, I, the story and like the atmosphere was cool, and uh, it's pretty much all I got out of it. But the sacrament, which is like loosely based on the Jonestown massacre, um, mm-hmm. so obviously you kind of know what's coming, but like, wow, I was blown away by how like he filmed this movie, and that you could see him like, like gearing up to reach that like next level because X yeah. was filmed so good. And so was Pearl and the house of the devil, which was came out before uh, the sacrament. I think the sacrament came out 2014, yeah. but like it was great. And it's like, I know you're not a huge fan, right? Of like the, um, like the POV style movies, like the found footage type of movies. I, I fuck with some, you fuck found with them. Footage. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, like I don't know who the footage movie. I don't know who I was talking right. about with that. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is found footage, but it's done in the way that like doesn't feel like found footage. I can't explain it, but like hmm. the shots are like cinematic, but also feels like first person and you're there. And the dude who plays like the leader of this commune was like really fucking good. And he has this monologue and you're like, oh, okay. This is him testing the waters. Like he for like Pearl, because she had that monologue at the end of Pearl and you kind of see like hints of like, you know, this like internal struggle of this human being. And you're like, Oh, all right. Like it's awesome to see like the seeds planted. I, and I was like terrified. I was like pretty on the edge of my seat with this one because the, the, the deaths were pretty visceral. And I was like, yeah, Ty West all the fucking way. Um, it's so was sorry. Um, was this his last movie before X 2014? Cause I know, I, you know what? I, I think it goes house of the devil, the innkeepers, the sacrament. Is there one before that, before house of the devil? I don't, I think he filmed like a decent amount of shorts. Um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So he did cabin fever too. Oh, spring that's fever, right. which, which he like completely what? denounces. I think it's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. He, I've, I saw it and I'm like, I might prefer it to the original. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because he is not a fan of it. Apparently from what I've been reading, he said the studio got their hands on it way too much and basically messed with his whole entire vision. But yeah. So after, so before X, he did a lot of TV episodes. Like he directed 
uh, an episode of the show The Outcast, an episode of the Exorcist television series, which no one remembers, a bunch of random stuff. And then the last movie he directed was In a Valley of Violence, which is 2016, which I, I've never heard of, but it has um, it has Ethan Hawke and John Travolta in it. He wrote and directed it. So that's another one we need to watch. And then he directed an episode of the Scream TV series, which was which is interesting. Oh, wow. But uh, and he had a segment in VHS. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was the sec- second honeymoon, which I can't remember that one. I think that's the one where it's um, I just remember like the husband gets his throat slit or something. It's like a I need to watch that movie again. Yeah, I don't know. I barely remember it. The first VHS but, was pretty great. But yeah, I'll have to check out the sacrament. I, I highly recommend it because it just bubbles up and bubbles up and like the tension of it, like you could feel it through the screen and it's a simple premise. It's the Jonestown massacre pretty much, but like it's brutal. Played by the gas station clerk from No Country for Old Men. Yes. Whatever his name the, the recommendation. I was like, <laughs> is that the same guy? Yeah, it is. Yeah. He gets a whole leading role in this and he's that he just wow the way he speaks in it and like it's crazy because i mean we're borderline sane human beings uh to some Sometimes. degree right <laughs> but i don't sure. like to be brainwashed by a cult i just like don't know how someone could just like be that vulnerable like have that huge vulnerable state of mind where they would ju- they just don't see behind the veil and they can't read the person like know they're being you know, played with and know that like this isn't good for them, but it, it's a, you know, a type of person that unfortunately falls victim to that is a lot of people yeah. with substance issues and abuse issues, which I, 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 I try to put my, 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 uh, my brain in their heads, but like, man, it's just, I'm like, you don't see this guy is full of shit. How do you yeah. not? I didn't know we were going to get political on this episode. <laughs> Anything can happen, baby. How, how do people get brainwashed by the <laughs> fucking idiot? I don't know. <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> Would never happen in the Bronx, baby. But no, I I know what you're trying to say. And um Yeah. It it, it would have to be a pretty Is there a cult where you'd be like, you know what? I think they're on something. <laughs> uh Florence if Florence Pugh led the cult i'd be like whatever she wants i'm into it i'm in it <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll fucking i'll cut her toenails i'll eat them whatever she wants to do i think the people that end up joining cults uh specifically the ones that like do like a mass suicide or some shit yeah it's like uh i think it's just people that live unfulfilled lives like they're just trudging through life yeah no inspiration they just want to feel something and And those are and and they meet these people that make them feel so special and loved and they're like oh this feels great i'm i why would i want to go back to just sitting on the couch living my boring life where i can be great and i can be a part of this huge movement and but ultimately you're being controlled like they don't even realize that they're being controlled and manipulated and it's just going from like one kind of depressing, you know, moment of your life to another. And you just don't realize it. Mm. Uh, and I, this time, this is the movie where you can like put yourself into the mix, like just like on the outside of like, wow. All right. Like a movie like Cloverfield, like you could really, at least for me, I could put myself, I'm like, wow, I don't know what the fuck I would do in that situation. This is like that type of movie. Very interactive, I would say. Yeah. Speaking of cults, you've seen the original Wicker Man, right? You know what? I watched 20 minutes of that and I turned it off. Whoa. Not because I didn't like it because like it was, I think it was like a little later in in the night. Uh, The accents were like not clicking in my head and I just turned it off. I I did have to use subtitles, um, but it's worth giving a watch. I mean, by the end of it, I was like, this movie is fucking great. It is kind of a slow burn. So I know what you mean. 
But if you like a good cult movie, check it out. Yeah, I do. I do need to give that one more of a chance. I, I yeah, I mean that's a classic too. 1973 or something like that. Yeah, 73. Um, I liked the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. <laughs> I never saw that one. I saw. Oh uh, my god, the, the funny clips and everything. Not the if you, if, you, if if you want to turn your brain off, this is a good one. I remember specifically. In 2007, I rented this movie at Blockbuster because I was supposed to go uh, like go karting with some friends and I was sick and I ordered pasta and rented that movie at Blockbuster and ate pasta and watched The Wicker Man. And then I watched Van Wilder, The Rise of Taj. Whoa. Yeah, it's worse. I don't know, probably The Wicker Man, but I liked both of them pretty equally. (laughs) Yeah, not Cal Penn and uh, Lauren Cohan from The Walking Dead. For some reason, we're in that movie. Have you seen Midsommar more than once? Because I haven't. Twice. I still haven't rewatched it. I saw it yeah. twice. Um, Did it get better on second watch? I think I, I kind of stayed the same with oh, it. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I just think Florence Pugh carries the whole movie. It's very, very very slow yes. and like i feel i feel like we don't mind slow burns but like be engaging a little bit i don't think this movie engages you enough it's a lot of like background stuff and just like not enough like i wish they would have delved more into like the cult and just been a little more like fast paced to some degree yeah. because it was so slow that i was like okay i get that they're there and they don't know what's going on but like let's get to something like just a little quicker. Yeah, I mean, um, it's definitely obvious that he was influenced by the Wicker Man. Because when I saw oh, the Wicker yeah. Man, I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, Ari Aster." Like, you're not you fooling us this off. time. You just want to rip him off completely, or <laughs> yeah, you kind of had a you kind of borrowed some things. It seemed like from from that. Uh, just from that like aspect of like you know burning someone in something, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, I, I um, literally how the Wicker Man ends. I, yeah, that's I mean yeah they do do that in the remake pretty much the same uh, pretty much the same concept. They take a lot of the I would imagine that was a big epic uh, thing to end it on the original, so they stole it in the remake. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else have you watched, Doug? Oh, I watched. uh, Okay, so I've been trying to just like expand a whole lot of film knowledge here. So I've just been kind of all over the place. Yeah, you've been um, Um, going back and watching some really old shit like I've (laughs) never heard of. That's what I was going to mention next. Uh, I did watch this movie called uh, like it. It just looked really interesting to me. And I wanted to get into some like old noir type of stuff like the mask see like they're smoking the cigar they have like the last names on the frosted glass uh yeah so i watched this <laughs> yeah right it was just like eh, hey, get them over there put them up against the wall like all that with shit. your talent and my connections i can make you a star <laughs> and they're like you and me are five foot go places two. doll face <laughs> <laughs> either go to los angeles that's where the big boys play hey stick by me i'll treat you like shit let's go <laughs> <laughs> we could have a table in the corner of the restaurant and I'll make a fool out of you. <laughs> like, all right, relax. Uh, but I watched <laughs> this movie called called out of the past, which was in 1947. Uh, it had Kirk Douglas in it, which is Michael Douglas's uh, father who uh-huh. literally looks exactly like Michael Douglas. Like I was like, what the fuck? Um, Robert Mitchum, who like, I don't, I don't know. But uh, and then Jane Greer again, I don't really know a lot of these actors of that time, but it was a fu- it was a really interesting watch because uh, like the, the writing back then was so different. I feel like the writing was like first in line, like everything has yeah. to be tight. Everything. The story has to be tight. It has to be interesting. There needs to be like the dialogue is just like very snappy and witty mm-hmm. which is pretty funny to me uh 
because this one detective was looking for his partner who ran out on him. And he comes across this gas station with his partner's name on the sign. And he was talking to someone who works at the gas station. And he was like, yeah, I was just driving by and I, I saw, I saw, I saw the sign. And uh, the uh, guy, the worker was like, it's a small world. And then the guy, the detective, the, detec- the detective goes like, or a big sign. And then cuts like to the next scene. It's just like, really like <laughs> sarcastic, snappy. Yeah. witty lines like the whole time like was hey what do like you want a, game is it a comedy uh no not no it's i would say like mystery noir it is okay. like they do say like you know i mean some parts made me laugh because it was silly um but i think i it's definitely worth the watch and do you know uh, why um a lot of old movies and like radio broadcasters, they all talk like that. They talk really high and really fast. You like the transatlantic accent? Was it due to Audrey Hepburn? <laughs> so I might be wrong about this, but I do remember learning this. It's because like old microphones, they didn't pick up bass very well. Oh, so so they had to talk really high pitch <laughs> to pick it up to pick up the treble. And they all sounded like fucking Woody the Woodpecker. And I think it just sort of evolved from that. I could be wrong, but I swear I heard that at some point, at least for like um, sports broadcasters and stuff. Yeah. Or like people on the radio or whatever. It's just so weird how like it like that, like the language like evolved, like from all like the Audrey Hepburn movies and like all like the stuff from the forties into now, like my mom used to say like, oh, like movies are just not the same. And I was like, but you're not giving new things a chance. But also, mm-hmm. like, in a sense, she's right. Because, like, no, movies are not like they were back in 1947. Like, it is vastly different. Uh, yeah. Like, this movie, again, you can't compare it. But I saw uh, Lisa Frankenstein today. And just the way the dialogue is written, it's just a different world. Yeah. Like, yeah, beyond, like beyond different. Yeah. Uh, which I kind of was not a fan of Lisa Frankenstein. I saw that. I still haven't seen it, but yeah, I will not uh, spoil it here, <clears throat> but uh, I, yeah, I'm curious to know what you think about it. It's definitely better than night swim. I'll tell you that. Well, that's, it's gotta be, I, think. <laughs> I still haven't seen it, but I can't imagine it's very good. No, hey, speaking uh, of older movies, have you ever seen Bre- Breakfast at Tiffany's? It's been on my list. Okay, I watched it for the first time the other night, 1961. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, like it's um <laughs> I mean, you got to think, 1961. <laughs> for its time, it was a very progressive movie for the statement it was trying to make like Audrey Hepburn's a very free spirit does what she wants. And, um, so for its time, I can see why it was groundbreaking, but watching it today, it was, um, it was a good watch. I'd recommend it. Yeah. I, yeah. Brittany was telling me that, uh, we need to watch it together and mm. she's seen it a bunch of times and I've, I don't know. I've always wanted to watch it. I just never got around to it. Yeah, so it I'm starts excited. out, there's this one character who is uh, it's played by a white man, but it's like stereotypical Chinese man. He oh. has like stuff in his cheeks, and he's like, I'm, I don't even want to do the voice, but... Yeah, I'm, man! I'm calling the Paris. It's like, whoa, <laughs> 1961, coming in hot. <laughs> you know what? Just hire someone of that ethnicity. How about that? Give them some hey. money. Every it's job like, does not need to go to a white man. Uh, the same yeah. thing with like the other. What is that other uh, movie that I mean, did he's that? a reoccurring character as well? So it's like mother of hey, God. Time for a little bit of racism. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's the 60s, you know, what are you going to do? How about be better? How about that? How do you like them uh, apples? I, I would still recommend it. It's a solid watch. I, I, I love watching those movies, too, because it's like a time machine it's kind of cool to see how things were back then and how people were written 
uh, especially like you said, with like the whole, like, you know, free spirit thing when, you know, women were supposed to be chained up to the kitchen, you know, uh, when men were off to war, uh, which is not why, like, it doesn't need to be that. Uh, and Audrey Hepburn is like a legendary actress. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, I'm, I'm, she uh, was 63. 63. So, yeah. She's what year was that? Nine, I think the nineties. Mm. Yeah. That was probably a big deal. Yeah. I don't I really, I don't so. really remember it. But, um, um yeah, let's hmm. see what's What else is on this list here? Um, hey, speaking I, of, um, Lisa Frankenstein written by Diablo Cody, Diablo Cody, who also wrote Jennifer's body, which you also yeah, watched maybe. for the first time recently. And I rewatched it and I was like, holy shit, this really holds up. This movie's great. I want, and I watched it for the first time. Uh, and I thought it was awesome. I yeah. highly enjoyed it. Uh, but like, that's the type of, that's the type of comedy and like camp that like, I feel like horror movies strive to be of today, but like yeah. just can't reach. They just can't get the tone right for some reason. Yeah. And, agree. uh, and yeah. And like, even like the writing of Lisa Frankenstein, um, the writing was great. I just don't think it was, I, I won't, I won't say anything, even though I told you my opinion about one aspect of it, but it's not Diablo Cody's fault in my eyes. Uh, why yeah, I didn't I just... like the movie. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Newton's a bum to me. <laughs> well, I know it's early into the year, but are we, do we have a nominee? Oh, award. Yeah. I was thinking that immediately. Okay. Melissa Barrera spirit award. She's definitely going to be nominated. That's definitely happening, but you need to see that movie because the sister, um, I, I forgot her. Oh, let me pull up her name real quick because I do not want to disrespect. Um, what is her name? The sister in it, Liza Sabarino. Uh, she was fucking great. And I'd never heard of her as an actress, but she was awesome. I thought she like totally understood what the direction was and she was giving it her all. She was charming. Uh, she actually played like a character with dimensions mm -hmm. and charisma and doesn't look bored. Not a plain really blue. good for an actress to be or an actor, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Actor all encompassing. Yeah. What's the, um, what's the, the actor actress. Is that like a thing now? You're only supposed to say actor. Forgive me if I'm, if I sound ignorant, but I've noticed that a lot of people, it's like a across yeah. the board term. Now you're supposed to say actor is, I kind of just throw it out out. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm genuine. I think actor curious. is like a gender neutral term. I mean, when I say actor, right. I mean everything. But sometimes I say actor or actress or whatever. But the yeah. Oscars, I mean, you need to dif differentiate, I guess, when it comes to the award shows to like, you know, best actor, mm -hmm. best actress. Otherwise, I don't think a co-ed system would uh work <laughs> in that yeah. in that sense. But I just think, I mean, in my eyes, like you could say actor and mean whoever. Whoever. Yeah, I wouldn't stop somebody and be like, whoa, actor. Yeah, act, yeah, act, actress. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, no, it, does, it doesn't really matter. Uh, actor can mean all genders. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. But what were we talking about before we got on this other political diatribe? Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> just movies we've watched. Oh, yeah, Jennifer's Body. Jennifer's Body, yes. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really fun. CGI maybe lacking a little bit, but well, 2008, they were still yeah. <laughs> you know, working out the kinks. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Amanda Seyfried was great. Uh, Megan Fox, I mean, she did she did her thing. I think the marketing for that movie was a little off because when it was first coming out, it was marketed as like Megan Fox is hot. Come see this movie, <laughs> but it's so much more than that. So I think it kind of, I don't know, got a bad rap before it even came out. Yeah. And I feel like, well, I feel like this might be a double-edged sword thing to say, but people are a lot more uh, accepting now and like willing to go out of their comfort zone. Like, I don't know, maybe like 15 years ago, 
just for example, Barbie, maybe it wouldn't have done well because a lot of people were like, fuck like Barbie. I'm not going to see that. But like huh. now, like it's just, it's just a movie. It's just seen as a movie. Not like, Oh, that stupid Barbie movie or that stupid Megan Fox movie. I, yeah, I, I feel like if right, Jennifer's yeah. body came out today, it would do a lot better because it just looks, just looks like a fun time. Yeah, I think you're right. Like you're saying that maybe a lot of horror fans at the time were like, oh, female led horror. Yeah, movie. like stand more standoffish and willing to just give it a shot. Sure. Yeah, uh, I can see that. And it seems like people today, they just they're more uh, I don't know, their brains are wired differently, which I think is a good thing. You know, it, you have to go outside of your comfort zone and not be so close minded like. Yeah. Also, if you don't go to if you don't want to see a movie because it's female led, you're just fucking brain dead. Um, Boy, we keep getting political on this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> keep talking about like social issues. And <laughs> hey, it's because we care about the people. We are but, not uh, let's be <laughs> solving the world's problems. <laughs> you know, I, that is that is a good point. They and do not want I, us in the White House. I think if Jennifer's body came out today, it would be received much better and it's a cult classic now yeah which and is a as, good stance to have as usual my boy adam brody crushing it like what, uh, middle, middle lane adam brody just <laughs> solid patrick wilson james wan adam brody just cruising in the all right lane. they're they're leading the charge on the 135 mm -hmm. uh what movie was he recently in that like you were American like oh Fiction. that was there we go okay so you were like, oh, yeah, Adam Brody I was great in it. And I'm like, who the fuck is Adam Brody? And then I realized <laughs> I've seen him in a bunch of things. Yeah, everybody's knows Adam Brody. They've all seen his face. They might not know his name. But everybody's like, oh, yeah, that guy. He's always solid. He always has small roles and does. Well. Is he related to Adrian Brody? Or that's just a I, common I, last I name in Hollywood? It. Yeah, I doubt it. Maybe. Um. He was in Scream 4 also. Was yeah, he? Who was he in Scream 4? Yeah, he played one of the cops. He was like in the car with, um, what's that guy's name? Michael. The one that got Shannon? stabbed in the forehead and said, fuck Bruce Willis. Oh. Um, <laughs> My favorite line. Uh, fuck Bruce Willis. <laughs> but yeah, he was one of those cops. Interesting. Gonna have to, uh, I've only seen Scream 4 twice, I believe. I don't, so I don't remember him uh, in it That's at all. Good. Yeah, I need to. Uh, I do need to check it out. Um, I did. Oh, so last Saturday, uh, I went. To, I saw three Dario Argento movies that I've never seen. So I built those refs up, Daddy O. And uh, did you ever? Did you see some of those movies? I've seen Phenomena. Phenomena, as, as Doug, <laughs> <laughs> so much more like, fun to say it with a twist. I was like, "Oh, what movie are you going to see?" He's like, uh, "Phenomena." <laughs> I was like, "You mean phenomena?" <laughs> and very well, confidently, I said it like with my whole chest. I said, "Phenomena." Welcome to our gentles. It. Get some <laughs> phenomena. Hey, profondo rosso. Get some phenomena <laughs> with the light side of sauce, huh? Get a light so salad I with it. I have seen that one. I haven't seen um, more of the other two. Uh, the first one. So we did a triple feature. Uh, Eleven forty-five. No, no, sorry. One forty-five was the bird with the crystal plumage, uh, which is his first movie that uh, Argento has made. I like that one the best. Nineteen seventy, uh, right? Nineteen seventy, even. And then the next one uh, was at like four fifteen, and that one was Tenebre uh-huh that one was i don't know how uh, to say that one is it tenebrae tenebrae i have heard tenebrae. it being said like num like numerous ways it's a tenebrae 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 a la vodka yeah that one you know what? i still <laughs> haven't seen that one either uh that one was fun um i feel they're all i like how they're all like i just love like the way he displays like mystery and you kind of like don't know it's just like r-rated scooby-doo in Italian, kind of. Mm -hmm. 
And then the fir- the bird with the crystal plumage, uh, there was a lot of unintentionally funny lines in that movie. Uh, I don't know if it was because some things just don't translate uh, right going from like Italian to English or whatever, but it was super funny and I, the, the acting was fun. The kills were fun. And um, yeah, mainly the story was, was really caught my attention. I just love a good mystery. Yeah. I was telling you, I need to have like a Argento marathon one day, just cook some pasta. Hey, that's fucking right. Sit down, have a, have an Argento day. Add those cherry tomatoes in there. Oh, and you met Paul Giamatti. We haven't talked about this. Tell me how no. we, we haven't oh, even shit. talked about it. Really? I could have sworn we did. No. Or I texted you and I'm freaked out. Uh, yeah, we texted about it, but <laughs> how did that happen? I, dude, I nearly shit myself and peed myself. Um, oh, good thing you didn't. I was close to it. Uh, he definitely would have smelt it because uh, he was in the this theater with us. <laughs> Gio your, Mati. Movies help, your movies helped me through my explosive diarrhea <laughs> then he definitely wouldn't have taken the picture with me um but yeah we were so there was an exclusive like pin of dario argento that ifc center was selling to like commemorate mm-hmm. the series that they were doing um and holly is a very nervous person so she was like how much is that and i'm like it doesn't say the price on there and she, well, I guess I'm never going to find out. And I said, I'll wait in the concession stand line and ask them. Uh, so I was on the concession stand line and we were like, ta- me and Holly were just talking. And I tend to like, you know, look around when I talk just to like, yeah. I don't know, think of the words, you know, and just like look up. And I just turned around and I was like, is that Paul Giamatti behind me? And I did like, I did like a, a really quick double take or tried sure to not he, seem like I'm sure he like eagle eyed picked <laughs> it up right away. He's like, ah, oh, shit. yeah, he knows he's been, he's been through it. He's out in the open. Here we um, go. <laughs> I, I was not cool, but I tried to be so cool. Uh, cause I was standing there. I'm like, my stomach just like dropped. And Holly was like, what's wrong with you? Cause I just stopped talking. Yeah. And our other friend, well, Steve's friend, Bernie, was next to Holly and they were talking and I texted Holly saying Paul Giamatti is right bucking behind me. And so I go up to the concession stand. I asked them for a pin and he's, I feel so bad because he's behind me and I'm asking the, the concession stand, uh, chick to, you know, I'm like, how much is the pin? How much is that shirt? Can I get that shirt? Uh, uh and I'm like, fuck Paul Giamatti's behind me and he, I'm fucking, I'm holding him. <laughs> he wants to buy yeah. his fucking popcorn. <laughs> and I tried to do this as like nonchalantly and just, Oh, didn't know where you were behind me as possible. Uh-huh. But like I turned around again just to like see who's behind me. And then I turned to him and I'm like, congratulations on your win. Uh, I love your work. And he's like, thank you. Thank you. I thought I played it off. Cool. Apparently that's, that's <laughs> I good. did not. What do you mean? Apparently what? Because I thought I was just like, Oh shit. Paul Giamatti. I was not like that. I clearly went like, yeah, I knew you were there the whole time. (laughs) Um, But, and then we realized that he was going to see uh, the Argento movies. So he was sitting in front of us, uh, like a couple rows in front of us. So we were like, Paul, we're seeing a movie with Paul Giamatti. Um, then we get out of the theater. You know, I don't think anything of it, even though like secretly the whole time I was like, how do I get a picture with Paul Giamatti? That's my immediate thought. Not uh, during the movie. <laughs> in the back of my mind, I had it there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and I thought that I was like, I had an interaction with him. That's good. Like, that's good enough. That was wild. Mm. Um, and as we're exiting the theater, uh, so Steve is first, Bernie is second, Holly and me are like kind of walking like me, Bernie and Holly are kind of walking all diagonally, but we're kind of all in a single file line. I love um, how detailed you get. <laughs> you're like explaining like body position. We're like, oh, well, we're kind of, 
kind of diagonally, like not a straight line. We're lollygagging, okay? Yeah. My arm is at a 35 degree angle, but my foot was at like a 60 degree angle. And we're walking at a speed of 10 miles an hour. No, I'm just, I'm painting a picture here. Um, hey, go on. Post just like, <laughs> like in the Sistine Chapel, baby. Um, but Paul Giamatti was standing outside. And Bernie walked past him and he's like, hey, how are you? Steve gave him a wave and I'm like, oh shit. Like he's outside. Like this is my opportunity to just go in and I'm celebrity obsessed. So I cannot keep my cool. Like I don't get, if he would have said no, I would have been like, I'll take the L fine. I totally get it. I'm annoying. Understand. But also there's the other side of me. That's like, I'm never going to see this fucking, I'm never going to see Paul Giamatti ever again in my life. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? So I'm just like, I, I go up to him and I'm like, Hey man, like I, I really love all your movies. Is it possible? I can get a picture with you. And he was like, sure, sure. Like, and I go to do like a selfie first and it's not working. And I'm like, oh, shit. can you, I'm like, can you take the picture for us? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is my son. I'm like, nice to meet you. Like, thank you so much. And I, I was made, I, I didn't want to be like, a dick <laughs> even though i was being bothersome uh but he took it and i, I made it a point to say like nice to meet you to the sun i want to just be like brush him off and then i'm like thank you thank you so much thank you so much i love you and then he was like no problem <laughs> and then that was it hey, that's, uh, that's cool man i was yeah i was yeah. totally not cool but i made it happen so it worked <laughs> i'm sure he was charmed by your uh your flattery so maybe him, him like half smiling maybe not but i i i want it to be as bothersome in like the nicest way possible yeah because <laughs> he was and then he came back for the third movie he came back with his wife for um phenomena mm -hmm. which was wild that he was just like out at the ifc center just watching italian horror movies that makes him even cooler. I mean, it, it really does. Did you see the holdovers? Not yet. No. It is free on Peacock. Uh, but well, even so, I suggest renting it. Okay. Yeah, I, I do want to watch it. I mean, Paul Giamatti's great in everything. He re he really is, and he's. I feel like he's still such an underrated actor. Like he's been in so yeah. many things. Yeah. That like. I don't know. He, you just don't. And he's been in leading roles and stuff like that, like sideways and American splendor. And even like lady in the I'll water you about, um, John dies at the end. Yes. In that, yes. And please watch it. You, you have this thing. I, I beg you to watch movies and you never fucking do. So I, I'll see your, Instagram I watch speak. Story. No evil. I watch speak. No evil. I'll see your Instagram story later that night. And you're like, Hey, I'm about to start this one. And it's <laughs> whatever. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> fuck me. I guess and it's not that, <laughs> um, but no, dude, I don't, did we talk about speak? No evil, at least my, from my perspective, because I oh, think we, no, or at least we, we, we didn't haven't. speak about it fully. No, we have not talked about it. What'd you think? Dude. It's, I, I thought it's it was fucking great. up there. It yeah. is. I don't want to fuck a lot of people shit on it, dude. Like mostly no spoilers, but mostly because of the ending, which I was, I was hooked through the whole thing, yeah. dude. When you said, I mean, when we first spoke about it and you told me to watch it and I didn't for a year, like two years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah. 2022. So two years ago, <laughs> yeah. um, you said it was like, you compared it to hereditary, I think. And you were like, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. And it was, and I was, yes. dude, I was, I was kind of, I, I don't like get emotional per se with horror movies, but like, I was like, I was blown away that like, I just started like happy crying. I was like, Whoa. Oh my God. Like I did not, I did not see. <laughs> I, I didn't predict what, what happened. But I was like, this is mm -hmm. fuck. I was just so happy that this was like a fucking good movie. Cause yeah. like, I don't know. I haven't seen a good horror movie in a really long time. Uh, at least a modern one besides like when evil lurks. Um, 
So a lot of like the newer movies I was just like burnt out on, but I was like, fuck yeah. Like this yeah. is, this is up there. I would say like, if we're talking about last five years, mm-hmm. this, speak no evil is up there. I personally, if I had to make like a top high praise, fuck, top yeah. 10, I don't know. In the last five years, I think, I think I would put it up there. I think people need to see this movie and be uncomfortable because it's, it's just, it's like, it's nasty. Like this movie's nasty. Yeah. Um, there were def- definitely a few scenes where when I told you two years ago, um, I was like, yeah, I wanted to just <laughs> crawl out of my skin. Like it just, yeah. I felt like I was in the room with the characters and I was just so uncomfortable and fucking hands were sweaty. And I'm like, yeah, like I just want to get out of this. <laughs> and like everything, I mean, fuck, I wish we can we talk about spoilers. I mean, it's been two movie, two, two years since this movie came uh... out. <laughs> Maybe not full blown spoilers, but sure. But hey, if if you haven't seen it yet and you want to, maybe skip ahead. We got to yeah, wrap. I, up I, I won't anyway, dive into but... it too much, but <laughs> just like the seeds that were planted, mm-hmm. and like just like oh, oh, like I feel like they did it like so meticulously that like kept you on the edge of like paying attention. Like you were, I don't, I was never bored. I was like, what is going on with this family? Yeah, and it was even worse than I imagined. <laughs> Yeah, um, a very drab and dark ending. It's not a it's not a happy movie. That's no, sure. I, I was almost like, again, when they go up to this isn't spoiling it like crazy. But when they go up, when he goes up into that place uh-huh. and you see stuff, the plot, I felt I, I felt sick. I was like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. and then the the ending was like casino levels, disgusting. Yeah. Like it made me, I was like, ah, ah, like it just made me feel like complete. It made me feel just sick. I was like, this is what I want. I want to feel sick when I see when I watch a horror movie. Like I, I was disturbed. I was down with the sickness. <laughs> I was about to say, easy, <laughs> easy David Dreaming. I was stupefied. I was raised. If I had 10,000 fists, I would raise them. Oh, you're breathing. <laughs> so hot. Now. That should have been the ending <laughs> song of that movie. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> <laughs> now. Are you breathing? Vocabulary with David Draymond. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that movie was a, a solid recommendation. From from hey, Phil maybe, German. Maybe you should uh take my recommendations more serious. I I should. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know sometimes I'm in the mood to watch I something. Know, I'm, like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But but I should. I really should because yeah. I'll I'll watch I would have Sacrament been tonight. Dude, well, I'm maybe, telling you. Maybe tonight. It's we'll see how I feel after. Class. It's not a long but, movie, and if I think, I think you'll be blown away by like what they show and like the ending like the whole like gore factor it's a lot of like mm. holy shit like oh ty west is fucking going there <laughs> i i thought it was great uh i don't know why that movie doesn't get talked about enough yeah i look forward to watching it i like a good found footage style movie and the dude from no country for old men talk about tension i think that's one of the the gas station scene in No Country for Old Men, as far as just that's up there with like the beginning of Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah, where you're just yeah. like you're just tense watching it. You're like, oh, oh, like, you know what we need to do a countdown of like, or maybe we could do like a portion of an episode of it potentially for the future, just like the best openings in film. Ooh, like Scream is up there for me. Of course, in, uh, Inglorious Bastards. For sure, I feel like that's like number one. That that movie had me. I remember seeing that movie in the theater, and that shit had everyone slinking down to their seat. Uh, yeah. There's so many that like really set up a movie mm-hmm. to like you know it's going to be great off jump. You're like yeah, yeah. like what the fuck? Uh, really just sets the scene, pun intended. Yeah, we'll just have to hmm, have to think about that one. But yeah, that's a good idea. I'll write it down in the in our notes section. 
Our collaborative notes. <laughs> um, shit. I kind of wish there's like a few more movies I would like to talk about, but I gotta go. Oh uh, shit! What time is it? Seven oh two. Yeah. Yeah, but I gotta <clears throat> get my hand wraps on, stretch out. Got a seven thirty boxing class to get to. It's my my favorite instructor. He only teaches Monday nights. Ivan oh, hell yeah. from, from Ukraine. He's very, oh that guy. <laughs> he's he's uh, very very scary, you know. <laughs> I would not fuck with uh, some guy named Ivan. There's no way. Yeah. Whatever he tells me to do something, I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're reverting to like a little child. Are you sparring tonight or just uh, training? Uh, no, that's Thursday night. Oh, all right. Yeah, you have no bruises or anything, so you've been safe for the most part. Every time I go, I get uh, booped in the snoot a couple times. It uh, <laughs> doesn't feel good. Yeah, no, a hard boop. Yeah. That's... I, will leave the, uh, I will leave the fighting to you. <laughs> well, I will fight for our love, Doug. That's what I'm training for. I, w- I wake up every day and <laughs> hold my rosaries that we never separate. <laughs> Fighting to defend Halloween six from the naysayers. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> Halloween six and scream three, baby. Hold hands and be one. Scream three for you. Scream. I'm all about I'm all about the creed, the creed verse and scream. Nev Campbell did have a sick uh creed poster in her room. She did. That I think that I think that fucking scene where she's running around the set of her actual house is like so fucking good and what if like come on you can't yeah. deny the greatness <laughs> of scott sapp's voice leading nev campbell down the down the primrose path oh shit <clears throat> well we are gonna step right there and uh, hey, hey 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 but what if we didn't and we kept talking about if. movies <laughs> hey we'll do something soon i'll 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 give you a call after class. I There's just something, some things you need to sacrifice. Well, this is my sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> what am <laughs> Hold me now. I'm six feet from the edge. Not there. We'll just, we'll just do a Creed karaoke episode. <laughs> All right, I really <laughs> All go, right. but hey, thank you so much for watching. Since this is a YouTube only episode, hit subscribe, would you? Share this with your friends. But you know, if you don't, that's cool. Watching is good enough, and we appreciate you. Always, baby. Always appreciate. Respect, right, appreciate. Def- Love you, Daddy O. Love you too. We will catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>